Good day everyone. I Mohammad Nasim Firdos would like to welcome all of you in this slide narration which is mainly focused on analyzing synthetic structure. And this particular video or slide narration will solely on the analyzing on the uh, analyzation of a uh, syntactic structure that means it will be more focused on the practical syntactic constituent constituents rather theoretical work though uh, i'm not telling you that there is no theory in here but what i want to mean as a successor of another video which is on the on, on syntax this particular narration will help you to understand how sentences especially the sentences of English language structured together and constitute more sentences or more phrases in English language Okay, let's see what are the things which are coming in the following slides. So we are starting with the contents and here the contents will be starting with the analysis of syntactic structure followed by tree diagram, phrase structure rules, lexical rules and complement phrases. So, if you have not gone through with the previous lecture on syntax, on syntax which is mostly focused on syntactic structure, generative grammar, uh, structural ambiguity, and div uh, structure rules and surface structure rules then I would like to recommend you to visit again and come back in this slide narration in order to comprehend better but you have if you have gone through if you have uh, understood well then this particular narration will help you to understand the analyze the analyzation of syntactic structure in a broader way so let's see what we refer to syntactic structure though we have gone through syntactic structure in the previous video syntactic structure whenever we will be referring a syntax structure we will be talking about the constituents and under syntax it involves the study of how constituents are grouped and ordered that means whenever we are parsing a sentence whenever we are separating the components of a sentence syntax will study how those components are grouped and ordered but it is not only all about uh, uh, the arbitrary rules of group and order rather it talks about the identifiable units it talks about some definite rules because we are talking about some systematic rules which is all about syntax so that's why syntax is the notion of constituency it's all about parsing it's all about how those components are grouped together in an form of identifiable units so whenever we are talking about syntax structure we are talking about analyzing syntax structure we are going to analyze the structure of phrases and sentences of course the clauses will be uh, will be there but we will be focusing on phrases and sentences we will be uh, uh, we'll be analyzing how phrases 
come together and produce a sentence or we will be constituting the sentences and find the phrases in it so four different levels of structure we can find whenever we will have the constituents and those will be the sentence largest and then we will have the clauses and the phrases and the words smallest though we know that words smallest are referring as the morphology but still we will have those, those structures because uh, here we will be talking about the structures in a sentence and the constituents can also be described in terms of the linear and hierarchical structures whenever we are referring linear structures then we are referring the line based structure like this one this is a linear structure and whenever we are referring as hierarchy structure that means there is a hierarchy that means uh, maybe in a major group and those major group will be separated in some um, 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 in some other uh, groups followed by those major groups and of course the particular particular form and function they, that they have in a clause so under every clause we will will be looking at form and the functions in there so we have uh, structures linear high structures and then we have form and function so under syntax structure whenever we will be referring syntax structure we will be referring parsing is the process of deriving and deriving for a sequence of words so Chomsky says that whenever we will be uh, having the syntax structure we will be having the parsing in the process of deriving a sequence of words in syntax structure so that should be deriving for a sequence of words in syntax structure so this will be in hey after hey I believe you have uh, you have this in your mind if you have gone through the previous slides this is a basic tree we talked about that but uh, here in this particular narration that means in today's narration we are referring as the diagram the tree diagram so what is a tree diagram in the earlier slide we refer to as tree diagram is referring whenever we are referring a diagram following the structure of a tree so here is the root and then the branches are there and we will be referring the structures so in other words in the tree diagram could be a, a bottom up process so from the root you will have the branches and there so a tree diagram is one of the most common ways to create a visual representation of syntactic structure so whenever we will be analyzing a syntactic structure we will be needing a visual representation and tree diagram is one of the most common ways to do that and in english we can have constraints in both linear ordering and hierarchical groupings so uh, whenever we will be referring tree diagram we will be referring as hierarchical groupings in there and these types of diagram as i said uh, just before uh, this slide that we will be going to the uh, 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 grow down rather than up that means and so as a branch we will have uh, from one branch we will have another branch and then another branch we will have another branch so like this one will be go down rather than up that means if you look at this diagram we will have sentence that means we will have the roots and then the branches and then under branches we will have more branches and then we will have the leaves in there so you will it will be grow down rather than up and that is what we are referring as hierarchical groupings so this diagram basis analysis shows very explicitly that there are different levels in the analysis so if, if you look at this diagram you can see that this is one level and this is another one and this is another one and here it will be another one so in its different level you will find different types of analysis so what is the diagram is all about it seems some 
I, I believe that something you will be under, uh, you might understand uh, like like what do you understand by NP, VP, AS, ART, N, V, NP. Some of you might understand these things, but I am not going to disclose this in this particular slide. But definitely you can understand that we are analyzing a sentence. And here is the sentence, the girl saw a dog. So in this particular sentence, you can see that this particular sentence is analyzed in, in the process of a tree diagram. So what are these things we'll be disclosing, exploring in the latest slides. So here is a complete tree diagram we are referring. First, we will have this one, then this, then this, then this. So we know that these are not the part of a real sentence. This is a real sentence. The girl saw a dog. We can easily find these categorical sentences in English language. However, we will find these words which will have a meaning, a meaning in a language. But we do not have these in our language. We can, we do not know these things in our language. But if we want to analyze this sentence, we will need these. And what are these? We will be looking at by the symbols. These are the symbols. And what the symbols explode to? Let's see. Okay, here. By saying S, we will refer as sentence. N for noun. V for verb. Out for article. NP for noun phrase. VP for verb phrase. ADJ for adjective. Pro for pronoun. PN for proper noun. ADV for adverb, pray for preposition, PP for prepositional phrase. And whenever we are referring as star, that means ungrammatical sentence. Whenever we are referring as a right arrow, we are referring as consist of or, or rewrites as, as. And whenever we are referring as first bracket, we are referring as optional constituent. And whenever we are referring as second bracket, then one and only one of these constituents must be selected. That means uh, if you have second bracket and under second bracket you will have the first bracket then you need to have only one of these constituents under this uh, section so these symbols will have uh, impact in the in the uh, in the slides to come because if you don't understand about the symbols you will find difficulties and challenges to identify and explore and analyze the sentence so if you have still have confusion just give a pause in this slide and look again and understand about the symbols the symbols in representing here you have already found these symbols in the previous diagram in the tree diagram and if you look closely you will find most of these symbols are represented in the previous diagram so symbols using syntax analysis. So as we say that by referring this uh, as um, uh, uh, referring this arrow, we are referring as rewrite as. So that means sentence is rewrites as noun phrase and verb phrase, and then sentence rewrites as noun phrase and auxiliary verb and verb phrase. So that means noun phrase, auxiliary verb and verb phrase also can be referred as auxiliary verb, noun phrase and verb phrase. CP. Complement phrase refer as complements and sentences. Verb phrase refer as verb and complement phrase. And then noun phrase refers as article and noun. And the noun phrase refers as pronoun. And NP refers as pronoun. And you already know that we will have as a noun phrase. When we will be referring as noun phrase, we will have article and noun. So, and of course, noun phrase has the form of article plus noun only pronoun and then proper noun so whenever we will be analyzing a noun phrase we will have articular noun pronoun noun phrase or proper noun and of course we will have noun phrase as article and adjective and noun for example the good boy the is the article good is adjective and boy is the noun of course we can say the boy that means article plus noun Article the and noun boy. We can use only pronoun he as pronoun. We can use 
as a noun phrase as well pronoun plus noun phrase as well that that should that should not be np here that will be only p and h and then whenever we will be referring verb phrase it will be rewrite as uh, rewriting as a verb plus noun phrase prepositional phrase and adverb are optional as we said earlier whenever we referring with the first bracket and prepositional phrase refers as preposition plus noun phrase so these are the structures we can find whenever we will be analyzing a syntactic structure of a sentence so you need to identify these things very closely the textbook has this repetition as well and i would like you to have a give a pause in this particular slide and look again on this section and try to understand what are the things represented in here so phrase structure rules a tree diagram format can be presented in two different ways so whenever we referring as, as a tree diagram we say we have seen it earlier we can have these two in, in in two different representation one is static and another one is dynamic static representation is like that for every single sentence in a, in english a tree diagram of this type could be drawn that means we should start from the bottom part so from the bottom part we'll start for example the girl saw a dog then we'll be analyzing this this particular uh, sentences uh, uh let, let's let's look at it here the girl saw a dog so this is a single sentence in english language and if we want to analyze this sentence we can say that yes dog is an article and then girl is noun and then saw is verb uh, is article and dog is noun and then we know that article plus noun equal rep rep uh, uh, represents as noun phrase and an article plus noun equal to noun phrase and then verb plus noun phrase represent as a verb phrase and noun phrase and verb phrase represent as sentence so we are looking in 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 like a, a top down process this is a top down process so whenever we are referring as static representation but whenever we are referring as dynamic format we are referring as a way of generating not only uh, not only that one sentence but a very large number of other sentences with similar structures so we if we refer as sentence equal to np plus vp so this is one kind of structure and under this structure we can produce this sentence and maybe some other sentence like as referred not not the girl but the boy we can say as the boy or, or the not the dog but the cat so we can refer and produce different sentences and then we can also produce this kind of sentence like noun phrase for article plus adjective plus noun rather than article plus noun or noun phrase equal to uh, 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 on only proper noun we can use that so by having those things by having this structure we can produce a very large number of of sentences following this structure and those structure are referred as phrase structure rules like the rules which generate a very large number of sentences with a very small number of rules are called as phrase structure rules actually we are following uh, the uh, uh, idea referred by noam chomsky we have uh, identified the generative grammar and under generative grammar we referred that by learning by understanding some specific rules we can produce some unlimited sentences so this is what we are referring at referring to by referring phrase structure rules we are referring that by producing some um, um some limited number of rules we are referring limited number of rules we are not referring in the sentences in english language we are referring only the rules these are the rules in here we are referring if we pr can produce this as uh, uh, these rules that we can produce unlimited number of sentences and that's what we're referring as phrase structure rules please remember that we are we are talking about only structural rules we are not talking about the sentences in the language we are talking about only the structural rules 
So phrase structure rules state that the structure of a phrase of a specific type will consist of one or more constituents in a particular order. Order. So we are talking about a particular order, and we can say that one or more constituents can be happen under a single phrase. So according to this rule, a sentence can be read as noun phrase and verb phrase. A noun phrase can be read as article followed by a noun. A noun phrase reads as either an article plus an optional adjective plus a noun or a pronoun or a proper noun. We cannot produce all the things in here, in particular one phrase, one noun phrase. If there is more than one uh, noun in there, then that will be considering another noun phrase. So we will have either noun or pronoun or proper noun. So here are the phrase structure rules. We will have these are the rules. Look at it here. We do not we did not uh, uh, we do not mention here the language. We only mention here the structures. Sentence equal to noun phrase plus verb phrase. Noun phrase equal to article plus noun pronoun on, uh, and then proper noun and then verb phrase equal to verb plus noun phrase prepositional phrase and adverb or optional prepositional phrase referred as preposition plus noun phrase so here are the structures from sentence we can produce this one article plus article plus noun plus verb plus article plus noun so this is uh, one kind of a structure let's let's consider this is structure one if you want to refer as structure two it, it could be like article plus adjective uh, uh, plus uh, noun plus verb plus article plus adjective plus noun if we want to have a more structure like structure three we can say that proper noun plus as verb plus noun or we can say proper noun plus verb plus adjective plus noun so this is structure four so here we have produced four structure one two three and four and by these four structures we can produce unlimited number of sentences but we are not talking about uh, producing sentences in here rather we are talking about producing structures especially phrase structure that's why we are only producing structures in this particular uh, uh, phrase structures phrase structure rules So let's move to the next one and that is lexical rules. Lexical rules is needed in order to turn the phrase structures into recognizable English. We know that before whenever we are having the previous slides, we have only only the symbols and that doesn't represent a recognizable English. For example, whenever we talk, we do not say like that at uh, uh, article plus adjective plus noun plus verb plus article plus adjective plus noun. And in reply, some others could say uh, noun plus adjective plus no, uh, noun plus adjective plus uh, uh, article plus adjective plus noun plus verb plus adjective verb plus article plus adjective plus noun. We cannot say these things in in real life. Rather, we can say uh, uh, the good boy uh, makes a good coffee. In in reply, one can say yes. It can be happen, and uh, a clever girl talks a nice cat. So we can see that we have different these kinds of structures, uh, these kinds of sentences in our language, not the structures. And lexical rules will help those structures into English. For example, we can refer Rima and Rimon as proper noun. Gala dog or dog as noun, a or n or d as article, u or he as pronoun, c or write as verb. So we can understand that lexical rules is needed to specify words during rewriting constituents. So we have the constituents, and if we want to rewrite those constituents into real world language, that means into words, then we need to produce uh, this one and. Uh, in, in, in the place of, of these 
symbols so here are the replacement whenever we are referring proper noun we can refer as Mary George whenever we are referring noun we can refer as girl dog boy whenever we are referring as article a or D, we can uh, we can refer N as well. We can refer it and U as pronoun. We can refer followed help so as verb. So we are referring here. Look at this last section. The girl saw a dog. We are referring these things as lexical rules, not these things. These are uh, not these things. Yes, these things. These are the part of phrase structural rules. So we are referring these things, we are referring as lexical rules. So under lexical rules, we will be looking at the girl saw a dog. We will be telling you that is an article, girl is a noun, saw is a verb, uh, is an article and dog is a noun. So that's what we are referring as, as lexical rules. So here is the tree diagram as well. Uh, whenever we are referring these things that uh, in sentence we will have these lexical rules so let's go to the advanced level whenever we're referring as complement phrase but before referring as complement phrase let's look at the sentence Rimon believed that Rima knew that Ria helped report so that's a long sentence which with the reference of of, uh, of of several deaths more than one death Rimon believed that Rima knew that Ria helped Ripon so there are lots of the issues in there so let's let's uh, identify what this death refer as the first two the word that used in the above sentence is called a complementation it complements Rimon complete Rimon believe this particular section complements this particular section and then this particular section complements this particular section so the role of that as a complementation which we refer as c the symbol is c is to introduce a complement phrase so you, so we are referring a new phrase which is referred as complement phrase and which is mostly a constitute with a complementation so a complement phrase rewrites as a complementation and a sentence so we have complement phrase and then complement phrase derives as complement and a sentence so whenever we are referring as complement that means we are that and the sentence for example in here we can say uh, that this this is a this is a, if we uh, talk about this one we can say that this is a complement that and this is a sentence and then we can call also that uh, this is a complement and this is a sentence Okay, so we can say that uh, uh, this is a noun phrase and we have plus verb and then we have complement phrase. So we here refer as complement phrase that complement and the phrase that is sentence. We have complement and the phrase that is sentence. So complement phrase refers uh, reads as complement and the sentence. So complement phrase comes after a verb. So these are the features of complement phrases. Complement phrase comes after a verb. So uh, after a verb, you will find a complement phrase. That means that will be starting after a verb. So complement phrase is used as part of a verb phrase, as part of a verb phrase, because under verb phrase, you will find a complement and noun phrase and verb phrase in there. That means complement plus verb plus complement uh, phrase like vp verb phrase equal to verb plus complement phrase it concludes that a verb phrase reads as a verb and complement phrase that's what we are referring as part of verb phrase so in every verb so it is possible that in a verb phrase we will have verb and a complement phrase so here is the long sentence we know that now sentence can be constructed as noun phrase plus verb phrase and we already knew that verb phrase can be rewrite as verb plus complement phrase and a complement phrase can be rewrite as complement and sentence so whenever we are referring sentence then we can go back again in this section noun phrase plus verb phrase so in like as in this sen sentence 
we can have this one non phase plus verb phase then we can say verb phase is equal to verb plus com complement phase and then complement phase this into a, a complement and sentence so it's it's all about a circuit like a sentence and then np plus vp and then under vp uh, we can go with uh, v plus cp that means verb plus complement phase and uh, under complement phase we can have complement plus sentence and under sentence we can go this one so it is almost a circle to refer that so it's it's a uh, uh, very simple but you need to understand you need to give you complete concentration in this analyzation so if you look at it here we can say that rimon we know that rimon is a proper noun so that's why we are referring as the here believe is the verb that is a complement we say that rima is a proper noun neo is a verb that we know that it is a complement ria is proper noun help is verb and ribbon is proper noun and then we can say that proper noun is a part of noun phrase and verb phrase plus noun phrase equal to verb phrase and the proper noun plus verb proper noun is equal to noun phrase and uh, verb noun phrase plus verb phrase equal to sentence and complement plus sentence equal to complement phrase and verb plus complement phrase equal to verb phrase and then here from proper noun we have noun phrase so noun phrase plus verb phrase equal to sentence and then complement plus sentence equal, we have complement phrase and verb plus complement phrase we have verb phrase and from proper noun you will have noun phrase and noun phrase plus verb phrase we will have sentence so <laughs> it seems a little bit of complicated uh, i mean complicated one but i believe that if you just go through the symbols and the rules you will have less difficulties and less challenges to understand this complement phrase so that just don't jump towards this just go with the basic uh, basic forms like sentence equal to noun phrase plus verb phrase and and try to understand what a noun phrase constitutes of and then what a verb phrase constitutes of, constitutes of and then you will be able to understand the complement phrase with complements and sentences so it is time for your practice uh, to practice you will have uh, lots of sentences in your book in the textbook which I referred so please visit this book please uh, uh, go with the sentences and get your copies and try to analyze the sentences just don't get stuck with only one sentence just read and try to analyze more sentences more and more sentences I believe it will be very helpful to understand this one and here are the references I used for this particular uh, slide narration George Yule, Mercier, and different other sources. So, if I have any question about uh, anything, so please do ask in the forum. And I would like to uh, welcome um, uh, as a participant as well in the forum. If you uh, can answer or if you have any discussion, any opinion, you can just insert it there. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, as uh, as I can say that this section is a part of uh, is the last part of syntax. So syntax is a longer part considering the other sections. So I believe that uh, as it is a longer section, that's why we have uh, got it into two classes. So I believe you un will understand more easily in this section. So thank you, thank you very much. That's all.